All right, Abby, where do you want to sit? Find your comfort zone. I'm. Oh, like, because don't move a lot? Oh, because yeah. you're going to move the mic. So I'm going to mic you. This is good. Are you sure? Yeah. You can lean back and do whatever you want. I probably, you do you want me to lean back? Whatever you want. <laughs> I fall out of the you chair. Say <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll probably like, do, I, I move in a lot, so I'll probably be like right here. Okay, so we're going to go here. So, just kind of introduce yourself and where you grew up and where you are now. I'm just joking. That was a joke. I went silent as a joke. Oh, no, I swear no. to God. No, no, no. Okay, so you... <laughs> <laughs> no, but really... No, that's a good, that's a good question. Who am I? Who even am I? My name is Emily Bryant, and I'm originally from Texas. I grew up in Texas my whole life, and then two years ago I moved to New York. And I work in coffee. I've been in coffee for six years and I'm an educator out in New York City. A few years ago, before I got into coffee, I lived in a tree house for many, many years. This is like fresh in college. It was, you know, it was good times and it was toxic times. It was, it was like, I feel like in coffee, you're gonna hear a lot of people who have kind of heavy backstories, like some raw stuff has happened to them, but that's what pushes people as people. And I think that's kind of what happened to me. I had no community and coffee gave me like something to focus on and people to talk to. When I first started coffee, I wasn't very good at anything. Um, I remember the first day they showed me how to pour latte art and literally nothing came out. So I had very little skills in it. I was very picky about latte art. I didn't want to get good at latte art. I wanted to get good at coffee. Latte art is just a way to in my opinion, latte art is garnish. It's the same way that like a chef would plate food. It doesn't mean that the food is just pretty. It's usually pretty tasty as well. And it's kind of like a send off. And so for the longest time, I didn't want to compete. I didn't compete in any, they're called throwdowns when you go to a latte art competition. And I refused for the entire first year of my coffee journey to compete. I entered my first throwdown one year into coffee, like an anniversary thing. And I won. That was about six months before I ever competed in any world championships. So at this point, I felt like, okay, I'm in the circle, right? Now I can kind of keep showing up for these things and maybe winning them. My first world championship was in Chicago and that was the summer of 2017. And I was so surprised I got in and my very first day, I made it through and I was very proud of myself. I remember a lot of people that I didn't know yet who would end up becoming really good close coffee friends were like, wow, you really did great there. Uh, as well as coffee enemies, because um, that's very prevalent in latte art. I made it past day one and then we all go out that night to party and that was mistake number one. And mistake number two was five shots later and then Mistake number three was staying out till 3 a.m. And so it's the next day and I'm going against someone who is in coffee considered like a coffee legend, someone I looked up to at the time. And me and my friend are running very, very late and we're just scrambling to get to the convention center. And I'm five minutes away from having to go on for my second day, but we're not even in the building yet. My heart is as hard as it has ever thumped in my life. And when I go to pour, it's against the legend. I like shook and it just, it all fell apart. And so I lost and I took it kind of hard, but I learned a lot, mostly don't drink, which is a lesson I wouldn't follow for future coffee fests. But I did learn that, that one time. First time as competitors or just people checking it out. This is the Latte Art World Championship Open. What that means is these competitors are all working with the same products, the same milk, the same coffee, pouring basically beautiful designs using just espresso and steamed milk. Now what's going to happen is we'll have our two competitors up here on the stage and we'll have a course of two and a half minutes to submit one beverage and one beverage only. 
Then they'll be scored in a number of categories by our three illustrious judges. And it's a win-loss category where essentially one person moves on, the other person has to say goodbye. All right. Emily, how are we feeling? Ready to rock and roll, so good to see you. Hey, it's nice to be seen as well, as well. Juan Duque, how you feeling? I know this machine is clean, happy to see you. All right, these guys are ready to rock and roll. Are you guys ready for the first competitors of the day? Let's kick this thing off. We got two and a half minutes on the clock. On your mark, get set, go! definition and the contrast he's looking for. Oh, but still two beautiful pours. Let's see who's moving on, judges. All right. Uh, thank you all for kicking this off. And uh, moving on, unanimous decision, Emily Bryant. Huge round of applause, guys. This morning was rough, but it wasn't it wasn't unpleasant. I woke up really early. I had a good breakfast, which is key. And I learned that lesson a long time ago, too. Uh, if you don't feel good, you're not gonna perform well. If you start off in a bad place, you're gonna be shaking really, really bad. And you're gonna shake regardless, but there's a there's a threshold. And this morning when we went up there, I actually messed up and didn't bring a second cup. The, the idea is you have two and a half minutes to put any drink down. And the, the goal is to be the first as well as having a pretty drink. But I didn't bring a second cup. In my first pour, I ran out of milk while I was finishing my pour. And so I'm looking at it and I'm like, oh, I can't put that down. It doesn't, it's not a completed pour, it's like half done. And so I just immediately dump it. And there's also a clean cup point. So that's a big problem because now I have to clean the cup and they're like counting down time. And it got really frustrating and confusing. And so I just took a second and reset and then went back through it. And I, I put down something I'm proud of, but it was, uh, it was humbling to say the least, it kind of felt like one of my earlier competitions where I was like struggling to get something on the plate. I always go for one pour if I can do it, which is why I didn't bring a second cup. And that is not good advice. Don't follow what I do. Uh, do as I say, not as I do, as they would say. I pour like five minutes. I remember telling you last night not to do this. Me and my friend are running very, very late and we're just scrambling to get to the convention center and I'm five minutes away from having to go on for my second day, but we're not even in the building yet. Don't come late. Always be on time. And I catch myself like running there all the time. 